Finally, Boeing is ready to reattempt the Starliner launch after the humiliation and the race with SpaceX. This flight will open a gateway to paradise for Boeing if successful, but it could be the gates of hell if it fails. And the question here is whether Boeing's Starliner is actually safe. Should NASA continue to use Starliner for future missions? Why not focus on Dragon? Let's find out more in today's episode of AB Space. First, we want to mention the current situation of the Starliner capsule. After years of delays and a dizzying array of setbacks during test flights, Boeing's Starliner spacecraft is finally set to make its inaugural crewed launch. As soon as May 6, the Boeing crewed flight test is planned to lift off from SLC-41 on an Atlas V rocket with NASA's two astronauts, Barry Wilmore and Sunita Williams. Last week, final preparations began with Boeing fueling Starliner with the propellant needs for its altitude control thrusters and a board system. Similar to SpaceX's Dragon, Starliner uses hypergolic fuel for its systems. This fuel can be stored at room temperature so it can last the entire mission. However, it's extremely toxic for humans. Fueling was completed mid last week, and so teams from both Boeing and ULA picked up Starliner and moved it to SLC 41 overnight. The process began at Boeing's facility at Kennedy Space Center, originally constructed as one of the hangars for the space shuttles and concluded just outside SLC-41 at the Vertical Integration Facility. Their Starliner was lifted and attached atop this special Centaur upper stage. Unlike other Atlas V rockets, Starliner rocket's second stage will be powered by two RL-10 engines. While Vulcan Centaur typically comes with two engines that standard, Atlas V Centaurs usually fly with just the one. The unique trajectory for required for human spaceflight and the need for redundancy necessitate two engines on Starliner Atlas Vs. If you're familiar with Atlas V, you'll know that each rocket has a designation that indicates its configuration. For the Starliner mission, Atlas V's configuration is N22. N stands for no fairing, two denotes the number of sawed rocket motors, and the other two represents the number of engines in the second stage. Looking at what Boeing and NASA have done for Starliner recently, things seem to be going quite smoothly. Together, they've managed to overcome most challenges associated with this seemingly cursed spacecraft. NASA officials also made it clear that they're collaborating more closely with Boeing than ever before, with ground personnel at Boeing's facilities overseeing some of the fixes the companies implemented ahead of the upcoming Starliner flight. Steve Stick of NASA, who's responsible for overseeing all aspects of the Starliner program, shared confidence in the probability analysis of crew loss during the flight. With results falling below NASA's safety thresholds, he explained that for Starliner, NASA's acceptable probability for loss of crew is 1 in 270, and for loss of mission, 1 in 55. Boeing's exceeded both these benchmarks and the probability of crew loss for Starliner is 1 in 295, and for loss of mission, 1 in 57. He does not have equivalent data for SpaceX's Crew Dragon. However, after all, can we actually trust the safety of this spacecraft? According to their planned launch schedule, Starliner is set to launch in about two weeks, but in reality, Boeing and NASA have a long list of issues to address. Boeing may even need to implement a redesign of some of the spacecraft's valves because of corrosion issues. That upgrade, however, is not expected to be in place until the second crewed flight, slated for 2025 at the earliest. On May's inaugural crewed flight, Boeing will instead use a perfectly acceptable mitigation that should prevent the valves from sticking, that be said in March. It's unclear whether this matter will be handled satisfactorily or not, but my trust in Boeing's reliability is not much. The series of missteps with Starliner has led Boeing and NASA to struggle for years to figure out what went wrong. Boeing's commercial airplane division has also faced a string of scandals, including the 737 MAX crisis and recent quality control issues highlighted after a door plug exploded on an Alaska Airlines flight back in January, damaging the company's reputation big time. Compared to these concerns, SpaceX's Dragon is performing incredibly well. They are the only partner of NASA that's been operating crew mission independently for nearly four years. NASA must feel lucky about this because it was Dragon that pulled them out from the pit of the Starliner program with Boeing. From the outset, NASA aimed for both companies to operate concurrently. Each Crew Dragon and Starliner spacecraft would serve as a backup for the other, providing astronauts with options to continue flights even if technical issues or other obstacles force one spacecraft to land. 
when one provider SpaceX has a newer approach than the other, it's often natural for a human to spend more time on that newer approach and maybe we didn't quite take the time we needed with Boeing's more traditional approach. It's NASA's shame in that erratic no longer lies with Dragon but has actually shifted to Starliner. If for comparison, it must be said that even Dragon's technology also really humiliates Starliner. Frankly, Boeing's making technology that looks just like it did several decades ago. The Crew Dragon 2 has a better heat show that could enable it to be used for faster re-entry back to Earth, thus enabling it to function beyond the LEO that the ISS is in. Importantly, even if Boeing does succeed fully, which we hope they do, they'll only be able to do two launches a year. It's a one-use throwaway rocket built from legacy parts of the space shuttle. SpaceX redesigned their rockets and Crew Dragon capsule from the ground up by reverse engineering old engine systems, etc., and radically improving each area with 21st century interfaces, materials, and know-how. Inside the Starliner's cockpit, the interface couldn't look more different when compared to the sleek touchscreen used to operate SpaceX's Crew Dragon. Control panels, gauges, screens, and numeric keypads dominate the astronauts' field of view. It's a design reminiscent of NASA's space shuttle cockpit. During SpaceX's historic launch on May 30th, NASA astronauts Bob Duckin and Doug Hurley seemed to only minimally interact with the role of three adjacent touch screens. In reality, Crew Dragon does most of the flying. The two pilots only manually intervene twice during the whole test flight. It's probably a dream of every test pilot school student to have the opportunity to fly on a brand new spaceship, and I'm lucky to get that opportunity with my good friend, said Betkin, in a NASA broadcast several weeks before the launch. Of course, Growing up as a pilot my whole career, having a certain way to control the vehicle, this is certainly different, Early added. Besides, SpaceX's commercial crew flights represent savings of $100 million compared to Boeing. SpaceX's per ticket cost to offer significant savings relative to the price of flying astronauts on Boeing's Starliner. That's assuming, of course, that Starliner is actually certified safe to carry astronauts. The latest per seat ticket price offered by SpaceX is actually $75 million. So, compared to what Boeing will charge, SpaceX astronaut ticket prices represent taxpayer savings closer to $100 million a spaceflight. Boeing will never be able to catch up with SpaceX, even if it does succeed in the upcoming launch. However, as with any complex engineering project, there are bound to be challenges and potential issues to address. In a significant development for NASA's lunar exploration plans, the agency has unveiled the design of SpaceX's Starship Cargo Lunar Lander. This unveiling marks a crucial step forward in NASA's ambitious goal of returning to the Moon within the next few years. The Starship Lunar Cargo Lander design showcases a sleek and futuristic appearance embodying the cutting-edge technology that SpaceX is known for. With its streamlined silhouette and advanced features, the lander represents a significant leap in lunar exploration capabilities. While the design of the Starship Lunar Cargo Lander is undoubtedly impressive, it may still face hurdles in terms of technical feasibility, operational efficiency, and cost effectiveness. After more than a century since NASA's last human landing mission, the journey back to the Moon is now filled with renewed excitement, fueled by the involvement of new players such as China, India, and Japan. However, it's clear that the United States will continue to lead this race, particularly with the support of pioneering companies like SpaceX and Blue Origin. As part of the initial plan, SpaceX's Starship HLS version is set to land humans on the lunar surface. However, there's another crucial component in the equation, the Starship Cargo Lunar Lander. This variant will be tasked with transporting and safely landing crewed rovers on the moon's rugged terrain. In an announcement made on January 9, NASA revealed its strategic approach. NASA also shared that it has asked both Artemis human landing system providers, SpaceX and Blue Origin, to begin applying knowledge gained in developing their future systems as part of their existing contracts toward variations to potentially deliver large cargo on later missions. This directive underscores NASA's forward-thinking approach, leveraging the expertise and capabilities of its partners to adapt and innovate, ultimately paving the way for future lunar exploration missions. As SpaceX and Blue Origin continue to refine their technologies, the prospect of delivering large cargo to the lunar surface is becoming increasingly feasible, bringing us one step closer to unlocking the mysteries of our celestial neighbor. 
this new requirement set by NASA marks an evolution in the contractual obligations for both SpaceX and Blue Origin, building upon the foundation of their previously awarded contracts. The focus now shifts to the development of a cargo ship variant which is anticipated to carry a payload ranging from 26,000 to 33,000 pounds, or 12 to 15 tons to the lunar surface. Importantly, this cargo variant is slated for deployment ahead of the Artemis 7 mission. NASA envisions these cargo versions to be derived from the human landing systems currently in development for Artemis 3, 4, and 5. Modifications will primarily revolve around adapting the landers for payload interfaces and deployment mechanisms, with the exclusion of human life support systems. In essence, SpaceX's Starship cargo lander will undergo relatively few changes compared to its crewed counterpart. It will still feature a payload door designed to open and deploy payloads, albeit likely with slight enlargements to accommodate larger payloads such as rovers. Moreover, the Starship cargo lander will retain an elevator system similar to that of the Starship HLS. This system will be instrumental in lowering the rover from the lander to the lunar surface descending from a considerable height. While specifics regarding the design of this elevator system remain undisclosed, it may incorporate door and barrier systems akin to those of the crew elevator, or it could utilize a system of ropes for gradual descent. Further updates from SpaceX are eagerly awaited to shed more light on this aspect of the mission. In terms of payload, a Starship cargo lander can carry at least three pressurized crewed rovers per landing. That's because the Starship HLS's payload compartment will have a height of about 18 meters and a diameter of 9, creating a volume of more than 1,000 cubic meters. This is entirely feasible so that the Starship cargo lander can accommodate three rovers or more. Right now, we still don't know the exact mass of each rover. NASA's requirement is 12 to 15 tons before Artemis 7, which means the companies will have four missions to do that and each mission will have to carry three to four tons. That doesn't seem to be too difficult for SpaceX and the Starship cargo lander because the original Starship can carry up to 150 tons of payload to LEO. It may be a little less if landing on the moon, but still enough to meet NASA's requirements. In addition to payload design considerations, ensuring stability on the lunar surface is a critical aspect that SpaceX must address for the Starship cargo lander. Indeed, this issue has gained significant prominence following several lunar missions from late last year to early this year. In addition to technical challenges related to the vehicle themselves, the risk of tipping over on the lunar surface also stems from the natural characteristics of the moon, particularly in the southern polar region where the Artemis missions are targeted. This region experiences extreme temperatures dropping as low as negative 240 degrees Celsius, or negative 400 degrees Fahrenheit, which can significantly impact electronic devices. Moreover, the rugged terrain characterized by a large volcanic system poses a significant challenge for landing vehicles. To mitigate these risks, SpaceX must prioritize the development of reliable landing legs to ensure the safety of the landing process. By upgrading both the navigation and engine systems to enhance precision and control, SpaceX can increase the likelihood of successful landings. While progress in engine system upgrades is evident through Starship's integrated test flights, the effectiveness of navigation system enhancements will become clearer, with future landing attempts, particularly as SpaceX begins landing trials with the Super Heavy and Starship. In addition to the rovers previously mentioned, the Starship cargo lander may also play a role in deploying another rover developed by one of the three teams recently chosen by NASA. Given SpaceX's extensive involvement in launching lunar missions in recent years, the SpaceX cargo lander appears to be the most suitable vehicle for this mission. With their track record of success in previous moon missions, this endeavor is likely within their capabilities. In the coming years, SpaceX and Starship face a multitude of challenges on the horizon. Alongside the monumental task of returning humans to the moon after decades, SpaceX is gearing up for large-scale cargo missions. This surge in activity underscores humanity's unwavering determination to establish a lasting presence on the lunar surface during this historic return. And that's about it for today's episode. Thank you so much for tuning in and that's all for today's update. If you enjoyed watching and found it useful, please make sure to subscribe to my channel and hit the like button. And if you want to support our channel and if you want to be up to date, you can become an exclusive member. So click on our perks through the link in the description below. Thanks to watching and see you next time.